At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, and now you also get automatically entered into the Richard Kane Ferguson Playmat giveaway. Alright, pack one, pick one. Got a pretty nice one. Our rare is Jace, which is decent, although triple blue not the easiest to cast. Other good cards include the Guard Mage, which is excellent. Spark Harvest is great. So those are the cards we're looking at. And between Jace and the Guard Mage, even though Jace is not the easiest to cast, it's probably still good enough. Spark Harvest is quite solid too. But I like blue in the format quite a bit. Don't mind starting with the Jace here. Alright, second pick we could take a Sahili, which pairs pretty well alongside Jace and set up for a nice spell based deck. There's also the Jaya's Greeting as a Salt Removal spell at 2, Wonder Strike at 5, a bit more expensive, but can deal with larger things. Taskmaster is also pretty strong, so a lot of good options, but I don't mind Sahili after picking Jace. Sahili is still pretty flexible, but they pair well with each other. Maybe set us up for a blue red deck or any blue-based spell deck, pretty much. Doesn't have to be blue-red. So let's take a Sahili. And uh, a lot of good cards we could wheel out of this pack as well. If it's a challenge you want, then a challenge you'll get. All right, so well, Bond of Insights. Not a card you can play in any blue deck, but if we pick it early and kind of build around it, it could be sweet. And pairs pretty well with what we have so far, since we can always target ourselves with Jace to give us more selection over the Bond of Insight. What else do we have? The Gleaming Overseer is quite strong. Although then we're kind of committing to blue-black, which is fine. Blue-black is a strong archetype. Um, I think those are the main considerations. There's also Heartfire and a Dreadhorde Twins, which are fine cards. But if we can stick to blue, it's probably better for now. All right, let's take the Bond. And no good blue cards here. Could take a Guild Globe as kind of a random filler card, still triggers our Sahili and can maybe help us cast a Jace if we don't have a ton of blue mana available. Anything else that stands out? Not really. There's some playable cards here for sure, but nothing that's too interesting. So don't mind taking kind of the Guild Globe as a speculative mana fixing pick that we can just cycle on turn two. All right, Tybalt is definitely a signal that red is open, although there's also a Callous Dismissal, which is excellent and doesn't make us go into a second color. But Tybalt might be good enough that we just take it anyway, and we kind of already want to maybe be in blue-red anyway with Sahili. So this is a pretty close pick. If there wasn't a Dismissal in the pack and just an average blue card, I would definitely take Tybalt, but Dismissal's a pretty good blue card. Alright, we'll stick to blue for now. Alright, there's no good blue cards here. Not too into a Crush Descent. What else do we have in the pack? Pretty late red-white uncommon here, but we're pretty far from being the red-white beatdown deck. No great red cards, so even though there was a Tybalt in the previous pack, there's no single red card we really want here. So we could just take the Crush Descent anyway, on the off chance that we end up playing it. We could take a Sorn's Thirst in case we want to be blue-black. Still synergizes with a few of the cards we have. Could take a Nurture, move into blue-green, more rampy, multicolor. The Nurture doesn't really synergize too much with what we have. I think I'm taking the Thirst and speculate on blue black a little bit more. There's also Shriek Diver and Behemoth, which are by no means amazing cards, but maybe a sign that blue black is slightly open. Alright, more blue and black cards. There's also some good red cards now. Heartfire could be quite strong alongside Sahili. Totally lost is not amazing, but playing one in the blue decks is usually fine. Have a bit more interaction. But I think I like the Heartfire here since we kind of want to be blue-red anyway. Synergizes nicely with Sahili and Callous Dismissal. And Honor the God Pharos is perfect. Toll of the Invasion, definitely a good card too, but we would prefer to be blue-red. Uh, Devouring Hellion, not the best card. Has a bit of synergy with those 1-1 one -one tokens we get, but overall I'm not the biggest fan, but I'm probably still taking it over Shriek Diver. Yeah, the Hellion could be good with uh, Sahili as well. I'm not the biggest fan of the Strix, could still take it since it synergizes well in our deck, or we could take a Guild Globe number two, so we can uh, easily splash any bombs we could pick up in other colors. I guess we're a bit lacking on two drops, so I could see taking it still. 
But it's not a card I'm happy to put in my deck. Could take an Aether Fallen that we can maybe splash. We got a Jace and a Sahili to get back already. And now I guess I'll take a Shriek Diver in case we end up black. Alright. So we could still be blue-black, we could be blue-red. Depends what we open in the next pack here. Well, could be blue-green as well. Awakening is pretty strong. But there's also some solid cards in our colors. Even Eternal being a great one. Not our Candles Dismissal would be amazing too. Let's take a quick inventory of our deck here. So... Our black is not too impressive, can easily give that up. Our red is also not amazing, but reasonable, Heartfire and Honor are cards I'm happy to have. And Hellion could synergize well in our deck. Probably not worth it to take the Awakening. So yeah, that leaves Dismissal versus Aven Eternal. I think I like Aven Eternal, even though Dismissal is a bit more synergistic in our deck. Having those evasive creatures is pretty nice. And uh, the 1-1 one -one token it leaves behind also plays well with Heartfire and Hellion. Well, that's uh, Ral's Outburst, Bond of Insight, Epiphany, there's even an Ashiok. This pack is stacked. Probably gotta take the Outburst and then uh, hope something wheels. Alright, what do we have here? Burning Prophet is excellent, another Heartfire. Could play Nahiri for double red, although we're not the best Nahiri type deck. Lazata Plating is definitely playable too. Probably taking the Prophet. Good 2-drop, difficult to get good 2-drops. Just provides a ton of value over the course of a game. Twins is just a bit of power and toughness to put in play, which is nice, but nothing special. Another Honor the God Pharaoh. Don't have enough synergy for Contentious Plan quite yet. It's definitely a playable card in our deck, but it's not amazing. Don't think we want Stealth Mission or Totally Lost too much. Hardfire is okay, but I think I like the second Honor the God Pharaoh more. And then we can maybe wheel a Hardfire at some point and pick it up. Alright, it's pretty happy with a Visionary over Transmutation. Transmutation is okay, but again, suffers from all the plus one counters in this format. Visionary is another decent two drop we can play. Alright, I'll take another Honor the God Pharaoh. I'll play as many of those as I can get pretty much. And now we can take a Heartfire, for example, to synergize with all those Honor the God Pharaohs. We could take a Crunch, although we're not the most aggressive looking deck. Don't have a ton of 2-drops, so if we don't have a 2-drop to play, then a Crunch is going to be a 4-3 blocker, which isn't always desirable. Not the biggest fan of Dovin. Probably just take another Heartfire. This is uh, best of one, so we don't get to sideboard in the No Escape. Could take a Grim Initia to synergize with double Heartfire and Devouring Hellion. Although we already have a bit of Sacrifice Fodder with Callous Dismissal, Triple Honored God Pharaoh, Sahili, Aven Eternal leaves behind a 1-1. So I don't know if we need the Initiate. Some matchups we really need to pressure the opponent and then having an 0-4 wall doesn't do much. Our deck is mostly at sorcery speed, so keeping up 3 mana for a no escape is not the easiest. We've got a few instants with the Heartfires, but we're mostly a sorcery speed deck. I guess we've got an outburst as well. It does get a bit worse in best of one if you don't know for sure if you need to keep it up to counter some bomb or if you can tap out. Take the no escape, I guess. Don't mind the blind blast, that's kind of a filler card. Alright, contentious plan wield could be decent. The more planeswalkers and MS cards we pick up. And last of the plating is definitely a playable card too. Probably taking it over a wall and crush descent. And now we can take a totally lost. Playing one is not the worst. So I think blank is out at this point. Not too interested in the catharsis. Alright, well this is a pretty good pack. I've got a soul diviner which we could splash. Although, it's not amazing as a splash card, since we kind of want to play it early. There's a Giant's Greeting as great removal, and there's a Spellgorger Weird as a great threat. Probably taking the Greeting over the Weird, but I would be very happy with the Weird as well. I think we just need more spot removal here. 
So far we have a dismissal and a totally lost as kind of temporary answers. Two hard fires and a Herald's outburst in terms of actual removal. I think we want an extra greeting. But uh, hoping to get some Spellgorger weirds in this pack. Well, I'll definitely take a Jaya as well over her greeting. Could use some more expensive cards, her curve is relatively low. Jaya plays great with the greeting, the hard fires and the outbursts we already have. Alright, another greeting, why not? And now we can take a Spellgorger Weird over the Hellion and Bonds of Passion. So pretty nice start to this uh, last pack. Alright, don't think we want a second Lasso Tap Plating. Could take a Skulker as a random curve topper that can help us pressure Planeswalkers. Could take another Contentious Plan. I'm probably playing the first Contentious Plan, I'm not sure if I'm playing the second copy. So probably just taking the Skulker for now, since we're kind of lacking in creatures. And another Burning Prophet is excellent. Over Relentless Advance. I might play an Advance if we get another one, but I don't think I can take it over Prophet. Alright, now we can take it. Over Initiate seems fine. Got a bit of synergy with the Advance. Another Burning Prophet, why not? Already have triple Honored God Pharaoh. And nothing here we want. Alright, so I think our deck came together pretty nicely. Could have maybe used like a Thunder Drake or an extra flyer, but. Overall pretty solid. Can probably get away with like 16 lands since we have quite a bit of card selection between all the Prophet's Cries and the Honor the God Pharaohs. So we still need to make around 5 cuts. I think we can cut the Strix now that we picked up all these Burning Prophets. Let's take a look at our actual curve. Probably don't need the Globe, have enough cheap cantrips already. Don't need the mana fixing. Hellion is cuttable, but we might keep it if we want more threats. No escape is questionable. Blind Blast is cuttable. Sahili is great. Bond of Insight is going to be quite good. Advance is a nice creature spell. And, uh... Alright, I guess we need to make two piles for the spells here since we have so many. Alright, so at two we've got Visionary Triple Prophets. At 3 we've got Eternal, Hellion, Weird. Godfire is not really a creature, but gives us something. And then Sahili is amazing. Advance and Jace. Skulker, Jaya. I guess maybe with Jace, Guild Globe is still somewhat playable, since we need to get triple blue, which is not the easiest. But yeah, Hellion's mostly 3 mana, 4-4, four, four, sack a creature when it enters the battlefield. Don't mind cutting it. The Weird is definitely much better. So we need to make two more cuts. We might have enough interaction that we don't need totally lost. No escape could be cuttable. Blind Blast is cuttable. So we would need to make one more cut here. So it looks like Honor the God Pharaoh will be cut. And we'll give this a shot here. Alright, opening hand. I guess I didn't even take a look at my mana distribution, but I'm guessing it's probably okay. We'll take a look at after this game if it's actually decent. It looks fine. Probably gonna play the weird before we honor the god Pharaoh. Opponent off to a slow start. Crovod. That's a big blocker. We can still attack into it and greeting if they block. Is that something we're into? I guess that's still fine. Although maybe just honor the god Pharaoh discarding a land and then wait until next turn. Might be even better. I guess we want triple blue for Jay, so we'll discard a mountain.
Got some good options coming up. It's a doggy villain world out there. I will help you through this. Three six Crowvald. So we could spend some burn spells getting rid of it. Could just play Jace and kinda chill. Jaya doesn't quite do enough. Can make her weird up to 4-4, four, four. one extra damage is still not enough to get past the Crowvod. So we could use two burn spells to kill the Crowvod and then kill the Planeswalker. It's not terrible. Could also Heartfire to kill the Planeswalker. Or Jaya to kill the Planeswalker. Maybe that's actually the play. Jaya kill Planeswalker. And then we've got a Chum Blocker for the Crowvod, although we kind of want to keep it for the Heartfire. Using both removal spells might be a bit much. But we get to kill the Planeswalker too, most likely. So I guess I don't hate it. Yeah, with the giant play, the weird would deal one more damage. Sahili looks great. Oh, let's hope they don't have a trick here. And we're still fine to play out a land. Next turn we could go Sahili plus Plan, which is great. Or we could play Jaya if that lines up well. So Sahili plus Contentious Plan looks good. We could keep the Contentious Plan in hand until we drop another Planeswalker. Although we can play Jace plus Contentious Plan in the same turn. I think just playing Sahili and casting the plan is fine. Start producing those chum blockers. Get in there. And do we play out the lands? Yeah, I think we do, since we might want to go Prophet plus Jaya next turn. We do have those Honor the God Pharaohs in our deck, but we already played one. And Giants. Usually a good blocker, but pales in comparison to our weird and totally lost looks good against the green-white deck. Think it's time to play the Prophet into Jace. Greeting looks good enough. Doesn't quite kill what they have in play, but it's still a nice spell to have access to. Alongside Jaiite can maybe kill the Nurture. So we want to mill the opponents and draw the Jaya's greeting. All right, mill the Kaya, that's good. And uh, attack for nine. We could have also turned our artifact into a prophet to get one additional scry. Don't think that was necessary. So the opponent's got a lot of things to fight through here and we still have a pretty stacked hand. Not our giants. Double block still doesn't take out a weird. Could have also turned the servo into a weird, so it starts accumulating a few counters. It wouldn't copy the counters already on the weird, but it would pick up any counters from any spells we might play. So what's the best sequence here? I guess turning a servo into a weird isn't bad. So this becomes this. Probably want to mill the opponent some more here. Since I'm not really interested in using a totally lost, I could totally lost a giant and mill it with Jace. Don't think a giant's such a problem. And our opponent's not playing black, so we're not afraid of graveyard recursion. So we can play a Jaya. No escape looks decent. No need to deal damage to anything quite yet. But the Prophet can get in there, and the Weird can get in there too. So now we get to greet the Giant over here. And our opponent's going to concede to that, just too much value. Sweet. 
All right, so far so good. Should have saved a few of the good draws for later. But we do get quite a bit of card selection as well with cards like Burning Prophet. Hopefully we can have a few more of those good draws. Uh, on the draw, not an amazing hand, but probably still keepable. Need just one land and then we get to no escape, which also lets us cry. Help us find a fourth land. And otherwise we get to loot with Visionary. And now I might just play the Prophet instead. Oh yeah, I forgot to look at the mana distribution. Oh well. It's close here whether we want a Prophet or Visionary. Since we're probably going to play 2-drop if we miss a land, so I guess we might as well Prophets. Grizzly. And let's play Visionary. Eternal. And there's our land. I guess it's time for Sahili. We could keep up No Escape. And if they don't play into it, we can activate the Visionary. Probably discarding the Lazotap plating, since their opponent's not going to have a ton of removal in blue-green. But getting the Sahili down early is a pretty big advantage. So it's definitely a close call. We also get to scry with the Prophet if we play Sahili. But if we don't play Sahili now, we're probably not playing Sahili for quite a while. Alright, we'll keep that on top, even though it's not a third island for Jace. A fourth land in general is still good. And Sahili is pretty likely to survive this turn. Alright, Bully. Put Scout from Eternal. And a Contentious Plan to Proliferate, that was a good turn. Well, I guess Sahili might die after all. So we might as well take out the zombie on the way out. That's unfortunate. Kind of falling behind on board, so probably need to play the advance. And totally lost would be a good answer to the Eternal. Of course, we don't have the fifth land yet. Don't know if we can keep it here. Like a hard fire would be an okay answer to the Eternal, since we can make a token with the plating. I don't think we can keep it. And just uh, pass a turn for now. I think we're staying back. Our hand's not really well set up to race. Oof. Yeah. Missing our land drops against uh, proliferate deck curving out is pretty brutal. So we've got a greeting, but that doesn't quite answer the eternal anymore. So I guess we're passing the turn. And Grizzly misses. And a weird, which can find contentious plan. Contentious plan is pretty good here. I think we get our no escape value while we can. Another greeting, so we can double greeting the Eternal. I guess that's an okay solution for now. Yeah, we'll still keep it on top. I'll happily trade for a Dam Breaker if it sacks. Just a flyer for now. Alright, I guess we'll pass the turn, since we want to cast the Greetings in the opponent's turn to pump the Prophets. And hope we don't get punished by another pump spell here. Could have done it on upkeep. I guess that would have been reasonable too. Opponent's going to start using the Grizzly, try and get ahead on cards. Finds a Sage. Bet they regret not playing land afterwards now. Just the Eternal getting in. Spellgorger weird. Yeah, I don't think we can keep that as much as I would like to. The plan here is we can Bond of Insight to get back a greeting to answer the Evolution Sage. 
which is going to be an issue otherwise, or the Grizzly. And if we find a third island, we can finally play Jace. Alright, so do we keep an island? Is playing Jace good enough on this board? I guess I'll keep it. It might be correct to bond of insight first anyway. So we can answer the sage before it gets out of hand. I think we do it. Bottom that since we're milling the top cards anyway, so we're better off milling spells. So I think we just return it to greetings. So we can kill Grizzly and Sage. I didn't want to keep land on top, since if we mill a better spell to put in our graveyard, then uh, might as well put a better spell in our graveyard and get it back with Bond of Insight instead of a land. Oof. That's brutal. Yeah, that's probably game over now. Yeah, this is ugly. Our bound spells don't even bounce the 9-9, so we're just ch chum blocking it forever. They already dealt with our Sahili, which could produce chum blockers. Yeah, if we still had our Sahili in play, this game would look a lot different. I guess we can double block and fall to two. Not sure if the Druid's more problematic than the Sage at this point. They probably could have afforded to attack with everyone there. Hardfire's not gonna cut it. Can make a chum blocker with the Lazada plating. And we can shoot something down with the Jaya's greeting. Or we can chump with the token we get from plating and sack it to the Hardfire. Still doesn't really get us anywhere. This would become a three-part creature, but yeah, we're still super dead. Alright, well, kinda stumbled at the start. We had the tools to potentially win the game if our Sahili gets to stick. We've got enough chum blockers for all the ground creatures, we can pretty easily manage the flyer. And then we can start leveraging our Jace to get ahead on cards. But by missing land drops, our opponent was just able to curve out and put us under enough pressure and take out Sahili. Alright, GG's. Alright, let's take a look at our mana base here, before we move on to the next one. So, it gave us 8 and 8, which is reasonable, although we do want triple blue for Jace, so we probably want to go 9-7. It's probably slightly better, although most of our early plays are red, between the Prophet and the Greeting, whereas Contentious Plan and Dismissal aren't really cards we're going to play early. It's mostly the Jace that wants us to play an extra island. Yeah, I think we'll play an extra island. Alright, decent hands. Turn 2, greeting. Turn 3, honor. Turn 4, Jace, hopefully. And there's a third island, so... Jace looking good. Strix. Don't have a flyer anytime in the near future here. So I think we'll use our mana efficiently. And a contentious plan doesn't look bad since it proliferates onto the token and the Jace. So it's probably better than an average draw. Sure, we'll keep it. Discard second honor. Next turn we can Jace. Opponent's keeping up no escape, presumably. Don't really want to play the Jace now. This is annoying. Yeah, I guess we'll cycle the contentious plan. Alright, it's a fine pickup, I guess. Can help us get rid of extra lands. And helps us pressure the board. And they're probably going to no escape this, since they don't want to waste their mana. Right, never mind. Maybe an Opnixil's Cruelty. 
Alright, Terran Scorn. Fair enough. I will tap out for Jace next turn, even if they keep mana up again. Alright. Jace time. Might be a mistake to mill our opponent, since they're playing black, they could have a way to get back cards from the graveyard here. Ooh, Narsets. And there's no escape, but now we can totally lost Narsets and mill her with Jace. Seems reasonable. Alright, floating out a little bit. And yep, there's Aeta Fallen. Well, we didn't really get punished by uh, milling with Jace, because they didn't really get anything more valuable in the graveyard. And we definitely wanted to mill them once we cast a Totally Lost. Although Commander Dreadhorde m punishes us for milling anyone, and they're still at 20. So this is pretty brutal. How close are we to ultimates? Two turns away still. If we could plus without milling anyone, we would probably do so, but that's not an option. And we do want to add more loyalty to Jace. I think I'm still milling myself since we don't have a ton of creatures. We don't know the opponent's deck list. Right, burning Prophet, not exactly what we wanted. I could have cast Dismissal and then use Hardfire to kill Narset. Don't think that's right. I guess we even have to target something with Dismissal. So we can simply cast Dismissal just to get a 1-1 token, so I guess we would end up bouncing Narset. Plenty of lands to discard at least. Alright, so now we can Dismissal plus Heartfire. So we could Dismissal one of the Planeswalkers or Dismissal the Taskmaster. Of course, if we Heartfire to kill one of their Planeswalkers, they can simply get it back with Command the Dreadhorde. If we kill the Narset, we can at least draw a card with Jace. Keep milling ourselves with Jace since we might also win with ultimate ability. It's a of that's a lot of burning profits. Ooh, Harel's outburst, that's a good one. So do we keep that or do we kill Davriel right now? What does the ultimate do? Draw seven. Sixteen cards remaining though. Could keep it to answer Narset. I guess we don't really mind discarding an island here. Do they find a 6 land? No, just an 8 to fall on, second one, alright. Narsets. At least Davriel is damage to players and not planeswalkers. Wow, our opponent keeps Narset at 5 instead of minusing, that's weird. I guess they're playing around like another burn spell. Maybe they have a full hand, so they don't feel like drawing more cards. I guess that makes sense too. Now Davriel's annoying, because they can make us discard Outburst. We could just kill the Davriel. Yeah, if we find a land with Outburst, we can still play the Skulker. How are we winning this game? We pretty much have to win with Jace Ultimate at this point, I think. And Narset prevents that from happening. Alright, take a lance. I have some fine prints to obfuscate. Keep milling myself, I guess. Yeah, this command makes things very awkward. I guess we'll mill ourselves. Yeah, if they just minus Narset, then we could outburst Narset and then start drawing cards with Jace again. 
Yeah, milling against a double eight the fallen deck is super awkward. And even have a command as well, so three ways to get back cards from the graveyard. And this can also get cards from our graveyard. So milling ourselves is bad. So this Jace could not have been more awkward against Narset, all this uh, stuff from our opponents. Bond of Insight, that could do some damage. So we've got 9 mana total. Bond of Insight can get back a number of uh, burn spells. Totally lost as well. So can we win? We've got 10 cards remaining. I guess we win. Bond of Insight, get back totally lost, bounce Narset, and then Jace ultimate. Get back totally lost. And then I guess an outburst, doesn't matter. Maybe a dismissal. All right, we figure it out. That was a weird game. And looks fine. All right, uh, let's play the island in case of Jace. Good target for greeting. Could also just untap an outburst in our turn instead of using the greeting so we get an extra damage in with the profits. So we can honor plus greeting, looks good. Don't have to greeting the silver wing, but it's an evasive creature we're eventually gonna have to deal with. So I guess we can greeting first for the scry and then draw with honor. Totally lost. Could be okay. Yeah, don't hate it. Could have also been reasonable to just play the Skulker to add some more to the board before answering the Silverwing. But we're also adding a token to the board, so that's something. Alright, so opponent's at 14. Taskmaster. And a greeting. Three mana available, so they could have a removal spell here. Is it a disaster if the Taskmaster gets to return something? It's pretty bad. Because we could play the Skulker hoping it can block the Taskmaster, but if they then kill the Skulker we're in trouble. I guess we can start by attacking. And they might kill the Prophet and then we can play Skulker. And it's more likely to stick around. Alright, that's fine. So we gotta hope the Skulker survives here. I think it's worth it to take a turn off killing their stuff. Otherwise we have no pressure at all. I'll play the land in case we need to totally lost plus greeting next turn, put a stop on upkeep in case we need to greeting on upkeep to improve our draw step. And if they spend mana killing the Skulker, they probably can't activate the Taskmaster anyway. Alright, Spark Harvests. But they're gonna stay on defense, let's and greeting the Taskmaster on upkeep. I guess we'll tap double red in case we draw Jace. Bottom of that, so we improved our draw step successfully. And Sahili to draw, not bad. Let's see how 
keep land in hand in case of another god pharaoh, although I guess... Yeah, we still haven't cast all the copies. Jaya was a great top deck. Get in. So no need to do anything, just get in for two. And we keep lands in hands. I guess we can play out one. Griffin, good target for totally lost. They might have a removal spell that they don't want to use on our tokens here. Sadly, we can't quite burn them out yet, since we missed a play here. Play out the lands in case we need to, like... Play an honor to God Pharaoh into another spell. Oh, that's a good draw. If they have nothing, they're dead. Time to use that removal spell on our token now. Just pass the turn. Next turn attack with everyone and Jaya can burn them out. Seems fine. Could burn them out with Jaya now. But, I don't know, feels better to wait. Let's see if we get there. Alright. So despite drawing a few too many lands near the end, we were far enough ahead on board thanks to those bounce balls as well. Alright, 3 and 1 with our nice blue-red spells deck. A reasonable hand on the play. Probably gonna wait with plan until we play Sahili and maybe the advance even. So turn 3 Sahili, turn 4 advance. And then we can play our plan. What do they have here? Plating, maybe? Haha, <laughs> their own Sahili. Fair enough. So we can take her out with the Heartfire. Let's just advance. Ooh, Tibalt. Tibalt's pretty good. So we can contentious plan, see what we draw. Our own plating. And which planeswalker are we attacking? I guess Tibalt's. At least threatens to kill it. Could also send a servo at Sahili. So we get to finish her off with a hard fire. I guess I don't hate this. Alright, just two blocks. That's fine. Take out the other servo. So we could hard fire to take out Tibalt. Or we can keep up no escape. I think I'll let that happen. Alright, let's counter that. Could let it resolve and then plating. Is that better? Yeah, no escaping's gotta be better. Profit we can keep on top.
All right. So that happens. And now we can hard fire, killing Sahili. Sacking our token that's about to die anyway. And scry with the prophets. And bottom of the land. And keep up plating. Well, Pona still has five cards in hand, but we're ahead on board. Hellion sacking the token, make a 4-4. Four, four. Ooh, sack both, make a 6-6, six, six. makes sense as well. Jaya's greeting doesn't quite do the trick. Almost. So I guess we'll just say go for now. And with the plating, we're pretty safe here to make this play, I think. So we can greeting the Hellion. Make an extra token. Bottom of the land. Not our profits. Um, it's tempting. I think we're looking for spells. Card draw spells, ideally. Jace would be great. And then we can block with Prophet and a Servo. And we've got Plating to make sure this happens. And that's perfect. And their own Prophets. So we get two burst stats. Let's keep up one of each. <laughs> I'll take the island, I guess. Get in for seven. Keep land in hand for uh, God Pharaoh. Two of those still in the deck. Opponents digging. Take eight. They need a bounce spell here for our five five. And even a hard fire doesn't kill our five five here. Bully. Counter on itself. Uh, sure. If we can dig towards removal spell, they're dead. Jace is fine. So, alright. Ponf was gonna fall to one here and have a pretty hard time coming back. Sweet. Alright, four and one. Let's keep it up. And looks good. Definitely got to see the power of Sahili in the previous game. And yeah, copying the 5-5 five five doesn't work since it doesn't copy the plus one counters. It would become a 0-0 zero zero and die on the spot, so that's not a great plan. Play the Prophet, which can protect our Sahili, hopefully. Since the plan is to play Sahili here. Alright, that might change our plan. Don't really want to let the battalion hit us. I guess it doesn't kill Sahili, so maybe it's fine to still run out our planeswalker here and then wait a turn on killing the battalion. Sure. Contentious plan isn't bad. Gives us a bit more loyalty, an extra scry with the prophets, and we can play it alongside a greeting or maybe wait until we play the advance first. Could attack to threaten or at least offer trade for the battalion. Um, unless they give our, their creatures plus one plus one somehow, they wouldn't have lethal on Sahili. So I guess we might as well attack since we're not blocking the battalion on defense. Sahili falls to one. 
And an extractor. Alright. Get to untap with Sahili, which is all we wanted. Battalion would become a 4-3 next turn, but it still dies to our advance token. So I guess that's fine. Just play the advance for now. And then maybe next turn play the greeting alongside plan to grow our token if it's still around. Maybe a little bit greedy not to just kill the battalion. Do we want the lands? Not really. Our hands all two and four mana cards, so a fifth land doesn't help us. Don't have a Jace that needs triple blue yet. If they kill one of our creatures, we could be in a bit of trouble and lose Sahili. But if they don't, then getting to untap with our army token and getting to proliferate onto it with a plan is pretty strong. Alright. We did not get punished for the greed. Behemoth doesn't die to the greeting or the outburst. But we can make our token up to a 4-4. Four, four. Even a 5-5 five, five with a plating. And there's Jace. Sadly, no triple blue since we scryed some islands to the bottom. But uh, now we can keep them. And I guess we'll chill and say go. Do we play the land as a question? I think we probably do, even though we've got Honor the God Pharaoh in our deck. In case we need to double spell next turn, 4 drop plus 2 drop if we draw land. And now if they go for removal spell, we get to punish them with plating. Alright. I should have considered casting the plating in response to the oath, because this is not a May ability. So they would have been forced to target themselves. So I guess it wouldn't really make a difference. Dismissal, sure. Uh, it's probably good enough. Or is it? Yeah, it's actually not amazing here. Now yeah, it's bottom. Time to play Jace. And we've got a pretty big set of uh, creatures to block with. Keep up Jaya's greeting. Opponents playing black-white. I think I'm milling myself to work towards our ultimate. Make a bond of uh, insight better. Hardfire, good pickup. Plays great alongside Sahili. Could even start getting aggressive here. Kill Behemoth. Get in with a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, sure. Totally lost is probably good enough. This attacks. And Sahili helps us protect our Jace, which is probably going to win the game by itself. Looks like they have a trick. Alright, Divine Arrow, so still a trade. That's fine. Any one-for-one -one trades we make in this spot are great for us, since we're so far ahead on resources. Spark Reaper, alright. Makes our removal spells a little bit worse now. Yeah, we're still a two-for-one in our favor, I guess. Alright, Jaya. Let's keep on piling on the Planeswalkers here. Honor the God Pharaoh. Not a necessary draw, but I guess it's good if we draw land from now. I'll keep it. Probably take out the Battalion. They can sack it to the Reaper. And say go. 19 cards remaining, so our library is going to decrease in sign pretty quickly. Plus first. Could also just uh, totally loss plus Jace to get rid of something from the opponent. Don't think that's necessary. Another hard fire. So we can kill all the things if we want to. 
but I think we're fine chilling, just use Jace as our win condition. We even have totally lost to bounce around Jace in case our opponent uh, tries to kill it with like a Spark Harvest. So I don't feel the need to do anything. I guess I could attack with the Prophets. Since if they block with Reaper, I can just minus Jaya. And if they double block, I get to kill the Reaper and kill the Celebrant as well. Putin just takes it. Fair enough. Alright, let's say go. Don't feel the need to minus on the Celebrants. The only thing we have to watch out for is our opponent somehow killing our Jace before we get the ultimate off. We'll keep up totally lost, I think. Just pass the turn for now. Could attack, don't think it's necessary. Just win with ultimates. Vraska, opponents tapped out, out of cards, it's good. So now we don't have to fear any shenanigans. Alright, so how are we winning? Can we win next turn? Uh, if we outburst, look at the top two cards. So nine remaining, eight remaining. And then Honor the God Pharaoh plus Jace Ultimate wins us the game. Ooh, I guess I might have messed up here. I should have gone face since now they can kill or sacrifice Vraska to the Reaper and then the Outburst fizzles. I should have just gone face to guarantee that the Outburst happens. Oh well, now we can just kill all their creatures as well. Doesn't matter. Uh, sure. Alright, Bond of Insight will do it too. So we can just mill ourselves with Bond of Insight. Sure. And then Jace Ultimate, and that's game. Pick up random cards. Alright, so a little bit scrappy near the end there, but we were so far ahead that I just wanted to play it safe by keeping up Totally Lost. Could have been way more aggressive if we wanted to. Alright, 5 and 1, not bad. Hand looks good, turn to Profit, some Greetings, and then we'll scry into some lands. Up against a black green deck, so we can expect some pretty big creatures out of them. And some splash cards. Reaver into maybe Spark Harvest. No, they're gonna hang on to the removal spell. Well, now it's a little bit obvious that they have it. Can attack with Prophets, and then Greeting if they block with the Reaver. So they can Spark Harvest, since I kind of want to keep the Prophet around. And if they take it, then I think we're just going to say go and keep up greeting. Alright, they just take it. There's a white mana. Bully. Counter on the Reaver. Attacks, play the greeting. And next turn we can advance, heart fire. Don't have anything to sacrifice to the heart fire, so I don't think we want to keep it. Don't need islands. Would let us cast a skulker, but we'll draw lands anyway. 
And now do they consider Spark Harvest? They don't. If they want a Spark Harvest to kill her 3-3, three, three, that's fine. Uh, Honor the God Pharaoh. Could be okay if we draw lands. Doesn't do much at the moment. I think we can bottom it. Got some options next turn if our creatures are still around. So this smells like maybe a Vraska's Finisher, maybe a Soren's Thirst, maybe plus two plus indestructible, maybe a Divine Arrow, Gideon's Triumph, you name it. And we'll take it for now. They could just five mana, Spark Harvest, Road Token, or a uh, 3-3 three, three now. That's okay. So now we can just play a Skulker, get in for one. I think I'm okay trading damage for with our opponents since I think we're likely to be the more aggressive deck out of the two. Despite having Jace as kind of an alternate win condition. Now they don't have a Spark Harvest for the Skulker. So now the attack probably implies more Finisher, Thirst and the plus two plus indestructible we can rule out. So I think we'll still take it. Wish we had the Heartfire now that we picked up the Aven Eternal. Either way we can attack, since if they block we can just Greeting to finish off the Bloom Hulk, Which is a pretty clean answer. Opponent takes it. Play Aven. And say go, keeping up Greeting. Still not sure what the trick is that they have. Opponent sends everyone. So what if we block like this? Now a finisher would be slightly annoying. We would want a greeting before damage. But then if they have a removal spell for a 1-1, we kind of wasted our greeting on the Bloom Hulk without killing it. So maybe we don't block with the Prophets, but I'm also taking quite a bit of damage in the meantime. Um, could also be something along the lines of Divine Arrow or Gideon's Triumph. I think I'm not risking the Prophets since it's pretty valuable. Just block on the Bloom Hulk like this. And then end of turn we can finish it off with a greeting. Opponent says go. And hope this works out. If it's the indestructible trick, we'll know about it. Alright, dismissal seems reasonable, can bounce their token. And then we can Contentious Plan. Jace is a great pickup. And we'll Contentious Plan now to get the extra Profit Trigger. And send in everyone here. And our opponent concedes, so we never got to find out what the card in hand was. From the way they played, I'm guessing, Vraska's Finisher, but I'm not sure. Alright, 6 and 1, let's see if we can win the finals. Hand looks good. Again, turn to Profit being kind of the key to having a good draw on this deck. Against blue-green, plating's usually not amazing, so I don't mind discarding it here. Jaya looking good. Um, I don't mind using the advance here. Make a 4-4 four four and get in a ton of damage right away. 
And I think I'll keep the land now that we have a Jaya and totally lost that we might want to play next turn. Our heart fire got a little bit worse by making this into a 4-4. But we're getting in a lot of damage in the meantime, which is nice. Kind of the synergy between Honor the God Pharaoh into advance, letting us attack with a 4-4 on turn 4. Kind of making a 4-4 haste instead of just a 3-3. We could play Jaya, attack with a Prophet, which is now a two-powered creature, so if they block with the Guard Mage, it actually dies. And then we're probably just going to minus to kill the Populous. That's reasonable too. And there's a small chance our opponent messes up. Bottom the Mountain, even though we could double Red Removal Spell, I guess. Mountain's not the worst, since... Jaya's likely going to fall to one loyalty, and then it's a nice sacrifice target for the Heartfire. And then we can Heartfire plus Greeting if we have to, but overall drawing a land is not the best. Opponent takes it. And I'll kill the Populous. Opponent's down to 8 in the meantime, so Heartfire... Represents a lot of damage. I guess we should have probably actually minus Jaya on the Populous before attacking, since if they do somehow block, then the Populous would have become a 3 3 and we couldn't have killed it with Jaya anymore. I guess that was probably a mistake not to minus right away. I think we're just attacking, see what happens. Hardfire with Jaya in play deals 5 damage. If we sag the Jaya to the Hardfire, then of course it's only 4 damage. So Prophet is dealing 2 right now, which alongside Jaya Minus and Hardfire is enough to kill them, so I don't think we need to make a move. Opponent's at 6. I mean, we don't really have to act here, but I guess using Jaya is not bad. Play a land, say go. I've got Hardfire as soon as they tap out, and if they don't tap out, they're dead to our board. Might as well play around a random counterspell. Dovin's Veto, you never know. Alright. Four to you, Sagjaya. Alright, sweet. So, ended up at seven and one. Our deck was pretty strong, I think. Definitely saw the power of Burning Prophet, one of the better cards in the Blue Red Spells deck. Just because you don't get many good quality 2 drops, but all the extra damage, all the card selection it provides is amazing. And uh, yeah, Sahili also put in a ton of work. Jace won us a few games by himself. And uh, got some nice removal spells as well in our deck to clear a path. And uh, yeah, 7 1, not bad. Let's crack some packs. Ooh, Ronos. Pretty strong card. Pack one, pick one. Probably Ronos. Even though the uncommon planeswalkers are great too. Pegasus is great, but Ronos kind of wins games by himself. And a Tomic. Two powered flyer. Not bad. Not sure if it's better than a Bleeding Edge, which is a strong card as well. Those are the two considerations here. Probably take the bleeding edge. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.